Good morning, everyone. There is so much excitement in the room that there's murmuring already. So uh, we're here again for Kingdom School, and um, today we're going to continue talking about Jack Taylor's new book, The Cosmic Initiative. And we're really not like doing a book report here. We're we're going to talk about how it how we can relate to it and um, mm -hmm. kind of use it as a script to draw out of ourselves what we know about the kingdom and learn more about the kingdom. And uh, I want to I wanted to start today with a little just a chance for anyone to comment because some of you well some of you weren't here last week some of you were here last week and didn't have the book. So I'm kind of assuming at this point, maybe some of you have read chapter one that, that weren't, didn't read it last week. So did anybody have anything they wanted to share from chapter one that stuck out at them? Or if not, that's okay. But I just wanted to give that opportunity if anybody had anything that they... And you're all going to be with silence, so there was, that didn't work. Okay. No, it was, it was, we talked about it last week. Yeah, yeah. But well, the, it was yeah. cool because to me, the just the title... Cosmic Initiative. That just kind of, you know, when you just hear the title, it went over my head. Yeah. Once he explained Me too. understanding <laughs> the kingdom and the fullness of it beyond just even the mm. earthly realm, but in, into the spiritual realm, into the cosmos, then it's like, oh, ooh. Right. Ooh, now I got it. Yeah, we forget that there's other universes out there besides the Milky Way. And it kind of brings it. In a way, it kind of connects the, the spiritual to what we can, what, what like I say, the scientific. I mean, to me, when I say the universe and the cosmos, I think of science. I think of what we've named it. Mm -hmm. But when you connect it to the kingdom and to the, <coughs> then to me, it all comes together. At least it, that's what I felt. To so. me, it was that the kingdom on earth doesn't mean anything without be, being connected to the kingdom of heaven. Mm -hmm. Very it's good. Supposed yeah. to be inseparable. And that's cool. where the real power and authority comes from. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, today we're going to start with um, chapter 2, uh, the centrality of the kingdom. Um, again, like I said last week, uh, Jack is the master of the really neat run-on sentence. Yeah. And um, <laughs> although there was fewer of those in this chapter, although it was just as deep. Um and I, I kind of took the time to look at the scriptures that went with this. I hope you're doing that a little bit as you read. Um, and so if, if something about that scripture spoke to you or, or added a layer of this to you, I want you to share that. Um, of course, the, he opens with Matthew 6.33, Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be provided for you. Um it's interesting that uh, he uses the word seek here, and then he uses the word provided. And we're going to see that more down below, but when you look at Jehovah Jireh, the word Jireh means to see and to provide. So as we get that, that's part of the, one of the scriptures that's further down in the chapter, and there's a time where we're going to talk a little bit about Jehovah Jireh. But he's setting us up in the very beginning of this chapter for that. Mm -hmm. um, and he talks about three things here. He says, uh, the kingdom of God is not only at the center of reality, it is the center of reality, both visible and invisible. Moreover, it includes all of reality from center to circumference. Mm -hmm. In view of this, there are many reasons for us to make the kingdom of God the center of our lives and faith. And he lists three of the most noteworthy reasons, reasons excuse me, uh, scriptural testimony, logical testimony, and personal testimony. Mm -hmm. So that's really the outline for today. I'm going to walk us through each one of those, and we'll talk about them. Um, and what he what he means by scriptural testimony is he means, you know, everything that about the kingdom can be justified and experienced in the Word in the Bible. Mm -hmm. So um, he walks us through about a half a dozen scriptures to try to prove that. And, of course, that's just a sampling. I mean, you could have your own list of scriptures, and, and I would encourage you to do that. Um, the first one he uses is 2 Timothy 2.15. And he, he picks this one. He says, the Bible contains thousands of truths, all valid but not all equal. 
As we study the Bible, we need wisdom and anointing to rightly divide or correctly handle Scripture. And in the Passion Translation, 2 Timothy 2.15 says, Always be eager to present yourself before God as a perfect and mature minister, without shame, as one that unapologetically preaches the word of truth. Mm -hmm. um, and, in, and in some other versions it might say, instead of as an eager as a perfect and mature minister, it might say, as one approved, a worker or a minister or something like right. that. Um, so don't take that as this only applies to mm -hmm. the pastors. And I mean, it's to you, it's to us, it's to all of us individually. Um, and, that, and Timothy wasn't speaking like to the heads of churches when he spoke that. Um, we must be able to recognize the value of individual parts that make up the whole without fixing on them to the point that they obscure the whole, which is the kingdom. The kingdom of God encompasses all the truths. It does not compete with them. Mm -hmm. This fact cannot be overemphasized. And he talked in there, there's a couple of sentences in there about truth and about, you know, there's some truths that are more important than others. There's, mm -hmm. But then he said, don't just take one truth mm -hmm. and let it override everything else to the point where you like ignore other things. Mm -hmm. And he talked about that as like the entryway to heresy, entryway to the mm -hmm. occult. Right. Mm -hmm. And you know, it's interesting because if you think about some of the cultic religions that we have today, they've done that. Mm -hmm. And denominations. And, and, and some even denom denom some denominations have done it within, some denominations have done it without becoming cultic. They've just, mm -hmm. it's like they're, their ethos, you know, they're, that's like, oh, we are, well, I'm not going to say any of them, but we are mm -hmm. this, and, and our core belief is that. Right. And, and you know, they're not wrong. Right. They're just no. kind of not as open-minded, maybe, as God would like them to be. Is that a nice way to say that? Or mm -hmm. not inclusive of all truth. Not inclusive right. of all truth, right. They focused right. on a truth instead of the truth. Right. Um, or they're not, I like yeah. that. Or they're not kingdom-minded. Right. Yeah. yeah, and we're gonna we're gonna take some time here in a minute to talk about how each one of you became more kingdom minded, because uh, that's really the purpose of this this chapter. Uh, so then he goes on to Genesis one one, and talks about the beginning of creation. One of the neat things he says here is that the God that hovered over the water at the beginning of time is the same Holy Spirit that lives inside of me. That's right. Mm -hmm. Now, yeah, we I knew that before he said, but but, cool. but when he said that and I read it, I was like, oh, yeah. Now, one of the things he asks us to do, and I have not done it yet, and I'm going to try to do it this week, is he asks us to read the whole first chapter of the Bible. And... Um, says, when you have sufficient time and space to allow God to let you in on what he is up to with his kingdom, open your Bible to the first chapter of Genesis. This is a book about him and his rules in relation to you and me and everyone else who has lived. And he, he goes on a little bit more. And then he says, after you have considered all this, gently close your Bible and hold it in both hands, thanking God for it, because within it is the answer to every question worthy. Excuse me, of an answer. It is the manual of the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. It's like, I think there's 28 verses in the first chapter of Genesis, something like that. Mm -hmm. It'd probably take you 20 minutes to read it slowly, you know, or half an hour. I, I wanna, I'm going to do that this week. And 31. There's 31? Okay, well, it'll take a half an hour then. We'll, we'll say it take a half an hour. Um, let's all try and do that this week and come back next week and just share, well, what did you get out of that that was kingdom that you didn't see before? Can I yes, interject? Yes, certainly. Can I? certainly. Um, when he talks about the Holy Spirit hovering over the waters, that word hover in Hebrew means uh, union, spermer, intercourse. Mm -hmm. So when you do read, you know, the Holy Spirit that's inside of us is birthing revelation mm -hmm. as you read. That's what the word hover means. Oh, so what does it mean again? Huh? Sperma. What does it mean? It means when you hover, it means like when the Holy Spirit overshadowed Mary or when the Holy Spirit hovered on the waters. Uh, hovering is uh, a word in Hebrew. It's sperma, 
means union, intercourse. It's a, it's a complete fusion of the kingdom of God and the kingdoms of this, of this earth. So when we read, you know, he's hovering over us. Mm. Mm. And like bringing that. that union between heaven and earth inside of us mm. when we read the word, because that's what it is. It's, like it's mm -hmm. seed. Revelation. It's seed. Yeah. When the Lord said, let there be, he cast seed. But when you read it, you think in hovering, it's like a, a helicopter. Yeah. yeah. But, yeah. but in, but in Hebrew, it's just, not. It's not. Come along over mm -hmm. the earth, you know. Yeah. But when you say it that way, it's like, wow. Oh, yeah. Brings life to it. Yeah, oh, yeah absolutely. That's exactly it also kind of it reminds me of like a mother hovering over their child, like in the crib. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, and you're going in to check on them. You know, it's like it kind it's of. It's even that, deeper than that because I mean, the seed has been planted, and that's the that is the 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 after. That's that's the that's fruit. Right. The fruit of it. The fruit of it. Right. right. You know, the fruit right. of it exactly. Right. The hovering to me, what I got was the the intercourse with the the, the, mm -hmm. the seed that's planted, that's just like exactly the seed right. planted. Uh, in, in Mary, man, it's yeah. that. Yeah, I it's never union. saw the earth like that. Yeah, it's union. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Um, some of the other scriptures in this section are Deuteronomy six five: Love the Lord your God with all your heart, your soul, and your might. Um, he comes back to Matthew six thirty three again. Um, I did a little reading on this in the Passion Translation just to see if it was different. Of course it is. <laughs> so above all, constantly chase after the realm of God's kingdom. Amen. Instead of seek first the kingdom of God. I like that chase. Mm -hmm. And the righteousness that proceeds from him. Then all, the, this is good because, okay, read, somebody grab 633 in, in another version. Please. That's the last half of it. So mm -hmm. seek first the kingdom of God and and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you or something like that. Isn't that basically what it says? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So what is and all these things? It's everything. What do you think it is? Well, when when I was reading it, uh, the Lord impressed upon my heart that... 633. We, uh, we tend to... When we read it like we were, you guys were discussing before, that we take it to the literal sense. That as we know it as Christians, that when we <coughs> see God's kingdom, he provides everything else for us. Food, clothes, finances, and so on and help. But the Lord showed me, no. This is how it's always been understood. But the revelation I'm trying to give now is that when you seek my kingdom, I give you every tool, every weapon, everything you need. To so one, defeat Satan. Two, grow in your kingdom walk. And three, become the person that who you're supposed to be. That's what I got out of it. Okay. That's good. Somebody read the second. You can read the whole. It's a short scripture. Read, read it in a different version. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you, or to you. So and all this is a simple statement, and all, all these, we don't even know what all these things we do. are. They're all in the chapter before it. Are in they the verses before? Okay. It. Got, don't worry about your life, what you eat, drink, or your body, what you put on. Don't worry about clothing. Uh, look at the birds. God takes care of them. Which how by worrying can you add to your okay. stature? Um, uh, so if God clothes the the grass of the field, then He will much more clothe us. I mean, that's okay. just one of the there things. There you go. Okay, good. Because um, in the second half of it, in the Passion, it says, then all these less important things will good. be given to you abundantly. So yeah. it just said it a little differently. You know, mm -hmm. I was just like, okay, helps oh, me understand it a little better, you know. Now, not to take away from what Revelation Nelson's getting out of this. Um, those things are there, too. Yeah. Yeah. They're both there. I mean, yeah. it's not one does not negate the other. Yeah. Um, then the last scripture in this section is Revelation eleven fifteen. Uh, the kingdom of the world has become the kingdom of our Lord and of His Christ. That's a that's like in the middle of this chap middle of that verse. Let me read the whole thing. I didn't write it all down. That's 
Yeah, no, they don't have the revelation done. They got everything else in the New Testament done with that. Then the seventh angel blew his trumpet, and there were loud voices in heaven saying, so here's what the loud voices were saying, the kingdom of the world has become the kingdom of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. So there's a couple of interesting things there. They talk about another kingdom. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They talk about the kingdom of our Lord and of his Christ, so the differentiating between the Father and the Son, mm -hmm. or the collective. If you want to say Lord is all three, I don't know how you want to re parse that. I mean, <laughs> you, we could have a two-day discussion on that, probably. Yeah. Uh, and he shall reign forever and ever. You know, it's just a, it's just a, s a symbol of God connecting the two. Mm -hmm. um, or could it be? Go ahead. That it's a finality of thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth. I think it is. Mm -hmm. I think it is. I, I actually wrote two kingdoms. I, it's no, it's the joining of earth. earth. Yeah. But what we've been yeah. seeking is the kingdom of God on this earth. <coughs> I wrote complete, complete kingdom in my notes. Yeah. I wrote complete kingdom. Right. Like it came to get finale, the finality is a good way to put it. Sandra, you had something? No, okay. nope. In the literal sense that we actually see it with our eyes because it's already here. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, but it's in the literal sense that you see it. Yes. Amen. So now Jack kind of moves forward and um, into the next level. And he talks about <coughs> logical testimony. Mm -hmm. So now he, he takes, so if the first one is a foundation, he's now trying to build on it. And he talks about what he considers to be God's Bill of Rights. He by no means says that this is a complete list. He just uses, he gives us enough to um, make his point, I guess would be the way I would say it. And he talks about, uh, there's one, two, three, there's seven of them. Did he make it that way? One, two, three. Yes, yeah, so of course, there's seven of them. Or there would be 12, you know. Um, <laughs> the right of sovereignty is one. The right of rule over creation, the right of purpose, the right of love, the right of redemption, and the right of providence. Mm -hmm. So let's kind of walk through these, and if you've got something as you read, share. Some of them he doesn't write much on. Um, the right of sovereignty, uh, freedom in his sovereign <laughs> self. Uh, the God who was and is the summation of all reality has freedom in his sovereign self to do what he desires. That's right. And he didn't give us a scripture for each one of these. A couple of them he did. But when I read this one, the scripture that came to mind was the second half of Revelation 4.8, which is uh, when the elders are, are bowing down at the mm -hmm. temple in, in, the, in, the, in heaven and the four creatures say, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was, who is, and is yet to come. It kind of, it just... It resonated with me about, you know, God who was and is the summation of all reality. It just kind of clicked with me. Um, the right of rule over creation. We're back to Genesis 1. Mm -hmm. uh, and what we talked about a few minutes ago. Right. If he created everything, it's okay to figure out that he is over everything. Right. Mm -hmm. That's basically what he's saying. The right of purpose. Let me see if I can. Yeah, the right of purpose. Well, the first thing it made me think of was a book that was written back in the, um, I think it was in the 90s, Purpose Driven Life. Oh, Rick Warren. Rick, and it just made me think about that because he talked when he spoke about it here um, and how without God, we don't really have or see our purpose. And he talked about, he doesn't say the atheist, he says um, those who claim that God does not exist mm -hmm. and who avow the folly of any thought of a divine presence are heralds of a parade of hopelessness. Mm -hmm. Their gospel is the following. Human beings are nothing more than matter in motion, the soul a product of fantasy, the afterlife afterlife a myth mm -hmm. human purpose a massive illusion and I read that and it said their gospel you know and I was like 
it's the gospel of the atheist. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I've never seen anybody put it down like that succinctly. And yet, if you read that, and you think of some of science fiction and some of the movies that we get to see, that maybe they don't portray themselves as ungodly and anti-God, but they portray themselves in this way. Mm -hmm. You know, human beings are just dust. The soul is a fantasy because there'll be some kind of fantasy life in the in the movie. Mm -hmm. And then the afterlife of myth, you know, it's like that far off tale that no one can understand. Mm -hmm. And and then a human purpose, uh, we don't have one. Mm -hmm. And and actually one of the movies that comes to, I'm trying to draw I remember the name of the movie right now. It's the one right now that Animal Kingdom has just made the whole new land for. Pandora. Oh, Sue? Oh, the Avatar one. The Avatar. Oh. And this just 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 as we were sitting here talking, this statement, and I'm not trying to say that Avatar is ungodly or anything, because it's a beautiful movie, you know. But if you think about what that movie depicts, it depicts this false reality. Mm -hmm. It depict, you know, it has have good and evil in it, it you know. Mm -hmm. But it's just interesting because it's an. I think it's kind of in a way an example of this sentence. I'm not saying it's atheistic or nothing. I'm not trying to judge that movie. <laughs> You can have your opinion about that movie one way or the other. Um, I mean, I don't think it's a bad movie, uh, you know, but um, actually I like the movie. But um, it's just interesting how man, how we, because if you won't believe in God, you won't believe that there is a God, you find a way to replace him with things you can understand and things you can justify a different way. Mm -hmm. You, you find a different way to justify afterlife. You find a different way to, to have a soul. Mm -hmm. You Your spirit is new age. You know, you, you, you you're just God. replacing it with something yeah. you can grasp without saying there's a God. Right. Well, they're they're right. not admitting that they actually have a void in their heart right. for God. That's right. But if you look at the title of that movie, um, Pandora, that mm -hmm. should say something. That's right? the land, yeah. If you look at the, the dragon, whatever you call mm -hmm. it, flying. A banshee and Irish is a demon spirit. There are okay. several versions of that if you do research. All right, there you go. So that answers that question. That's not godly. Right. But they need to fill the void in their spirit, man, for something because they don't know God. Mm. Yeah. Very good. Because they are the God. Mm -hmm. Someone um. has to be God. So. Someone has to be God. <laughs> well, that's just it. Even when you say there isn't one, you're trying to fill that void with something. You know, that, you're absolutely right. Even if you're saying he isn't there, or she, whatever, it isn't there, without gender, right. i got to have something to fill that space. That's right. Or I'm just empty and lost. Right. And to me, I think there's a difference between being empty and lost and saying there is no God. Yes. Because if you say there is no God, you've made a decision. Yeah. If you're empty and lost, you're that. You're empty and lost. You're, yeah. you're still having still decided. An option, yeah. There's yeah. still an option there. And there's a different kind of. That's a different. Mm -hmm. That's a different place. Mm -hmm. So, um, where are we here? Right of love. Right of love. Thank you. Um, what do I have here? We talk about. You flip a page and you'll find out. Mm -hmm. 1 John 4, 8, and 16. Okay. I went again to the Passion Translation just to try and get a different glimpse of this because I knew the scripture in, the, in, the, in any other version. The one who doesn't, this is 8, the one who doesn't love has yet to know God, for God is love. Mm -hmm. And under the, under the notes there it says, Our God continually exists being love. God's love was revealed among us. Mm -hmm. um, in 16, it says, We have come into an intimate experience with God's love. We're back to hovering. And we mm -hmm. trust in the love he has for us. Mm -hmm. God is love. Those who are living in and living in, and God lives through them. Okay, I think I got that right. Mm -hmm. I may have messed it up. Mm -hmm. um, the right of redemption. God has the right to rule over all whom he has personally redeemed. That's what he says. That's what Jack puts how Jack puts it. So in other words, he personal okay, Jesus died for all. 
That's right. So whether you choose that path or not, God did redeem you. So you can't say, well, I'm a Muslim or I'm an atheist or I'm a this or I'm a that and I don't, I'm a Hindu and I, my God is different and I don't. Because the same God did the same thing mm -hmm. for everyone, whether they accept and believe in it or not. I get to looking at that word rule because I think many times the connotation of rule means you control somebody else. You're ruling mm -hmm. the things that they do. And I thought, that's not God. That's not the God I know now. Mm -hmm. So what am I really looking at? So I looked it up in the dictionary and rule is to have an influence over, to guide, and to govern. So it doesn't mean total It doesn't mean that I don't control you. No. Right. Yeah. That I can... That's good. Right. That's good. That's good. That's why he's a king and he has a kingdom. Oh, the rest of us are domes? No, kingdom, meaning that there's, many of there's us. a ruler. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, that's why he's called a kingdom. There is a ruler. Uh -huh. What? Yeah. <laughs> that's right. But that was good that now that you know that it is a kingdom, he is the king, he rules, but he doesn't rule with the iron class. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He rules with love. Yes. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. <clears throat> he talks in here, he uses Acts 20, 28. Mm -hmm. um, and he's, he's, the lead in sentence says, God has the right to rule over <coughs> all whom he has personally redeemed in Christ, the church of God, which he purchased with his own blood. And then the reference is Acts 20, 28. So um, I kind of looked up, and I think this is a paraphrase, but who's the audiences here is a little interesting. Paul in chapter 20 is speaking to the elders of the church of Ephesus. Mm -hmm. um, guard your heart, be true shepherds over all the flock, and feed them well. The Holy Spirit appointed you to guard and oversee the churches. So that, that you know, here we're talking about a, a more specific discussion with a, with a set group of people. Um, but the connotation of it is the same. Mm -hmm. uh, and now we're kind of coming full circle back to Jehovah Jireh and the right of providence. God has the right to be our main provider, the one we are to look to first for all our needs. Jesus said, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be provided for you. One of the names of God in the Old Testament is Jehovah Jireh. So I got out my Names of God book, which is a devotional that I haven't read in a while, and I looked up the page on Jehovah Jireh. The Hebrew word ra, from which yaira is provide, derived, means to see. In this case, it is translated as provide. Since God sees the future as well as the past and the present, he is able to anticipate and provide for what is needed. That's right. Interestingly, the English word provision is made up of two Latin words that mean to see beforehand. So when you pray to Yahweh Yaira, you are... Praying to God who sees the situation beforehand and is able to provide for your needs. That's right. And I think the one thing we have to remember there is he doesn't provide for our wants. Amen. Mm -hmm. um, he provides, he provides for Provides all needs. these things. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and of course the key scripture for Jehovah Jireh is Genesis 22, 13 and 14. Mm -hmm. Abraham and Isaac when he went to sacrifice him on Mount Moriah. And in, in that devotional, it takes you through that scripture for like a week. And it shows you different aspects of it. Um, so now we kind of come down to the part where, we're doing, we're doing pretty good on time here. This is good. Mm -hmm. um, the last thing Jack uses is personal testimony. And he said, the third reason to make the kingdom of God the center of our lives and faith is the personal testimony of those who have experienced the kingdom and are convinced of its reality. And he says, although I may not be able to completely prove the kingdom by my only by my personal testimony, I'm paraphrasing now, my personal testimony associated with scriptural and logical testimony confirm it is so. So what I wanted to do in this part was I thought, I, I would bore you for a second with my personal testimony on the kingdom. Yeah. And ask you to share yours if you want to. 
And so for me, I had to, I had to think about this a little bit. I actually pulled out a couple of journals to get some dates and stuff. Um, I grew up in a Methodist church, and so my my spiritual upbringing was denominational. Um, and then as a young adult, I was still in the Methodist church and into middle middle age. And then in 04, I left the Methodist, in like 2002 to 2004, I left the Methodist church and helped to plant a, an independent, I just call it a, like a baby Methodist church because it was still with an ex-free Methodist pastor, wasn't spirit-filled. And then in 04, I started attending a spirit-filled church. And I think that that opened my eyes more to the kingdom. And it really wasn't until 2012 when we merged the two churches and I started coming here with Charlie that I began to, and then the first thing that happened for me was I began to understand and embrace sonship and spiritual father. And along the time that that happened, my eyes began to be opened to the kingdom. And part of that was because Charlie was beginning to preach on it more. Part of that was because I was seeking it. And and it was like, well, what is this kingdom that we, everybody's talking about? And it wasn't that I hadn't heard of it before, but I had never really spent any time dwelling on it before. And so then I found that... Um, in that spring of 2012 was where, if I look at my notes and my study stuff from back then, that's where I really pressed in. And I, you know, I, I did a lot of personal study. I asked God. He showed me things. He, he, um, he spoke to me and, and in different ways, um, gave me personal revelation about the kingdom, told me I was on the right track, you know, encouraged me to keep going with it. And um, then I think for a while we kind of get to a place or I got to a place where I was like, oh, yeah, I get the kingdom. Charlie even said, I get the kingdom. Cool, I get the kingdom. You just, you don't get yeah. the kingdom. You don't like get it and like put it in your pocket <laughs> and say you have it because it, there's more of it. There, there's so much more of it. And so I will say in the last five years, there's probably been times where I've kind of gone dormant on it and not like kept studying it and kept expanding my, my thoughts on it. And then there's times of renewal in those five years. Um, and then, and then somewheres in that five years, it quit being a topic and it became and that's kind of where I'm at now with it. Is what what is what? Where's the kingdom in that? You know, and I I initially equated it to um, early on in my adult, but when you would study the Bible and the first time you ever saw Jesus in the Old Testament, and you'd be like, "Oh yeah, that's Jesus." And then the next thing you know, you can see Jesus almost anywhere. Well, I think the kingdom is like that. Once you start to understand it and see it, you're going to see it in more places. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of my personal testimony for what it's worth of the kingdom. So what 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 is yours? Does anybody want to share? Uh, I uh, most of my from the history that my mom told me, I had been have encounters with angels from a very young age, like from the age of two through uh, fourth grade when I started becoming an altar boy. I would have encounters during the services where now I understand it was the Holy Spirit coming upon me. Uh, I would shake and tremble, cry incessantly without, and I'm like, what's going on? I thought I was going crazy. But then when I accepted the Lord in 88, I understood what was happening to me in those four years as an altar boy. There was a Lord trying to show me who he was, trying to show me his love, trying to show me he's real. Because I, in the Catholic Church where I grew up, which is where I was an altar boy, they talked about Jesus and they talked about God and the Holy Spirit, but they limited you to what you knew. 
what you were to know because only the preacher preached, you know, the mm -hmm. priest and whatever he preached, that's what you went with all week. But I knew there was more. And, uh, and like you said, I started, as I read the Word, I started seeing Jesus in a lot of things. I started seeing the Holy Spirit with the gifts and the anointings. Then I started seeing the Father with His love. And like you said, when I started coming here, I started seeing the sonship. I'm still learning about sonship. I haven't gotten all of it yet, but I'm still learning. But in, in the whole thing of the kingdom, with, with the Trinity and everything we've been learning, the main center of all the kingdom is God's love. How he loves us so much that he, uh, he'll do anything to have us be a part of him. Because that's how who he is. He's love. And he created us to love in return. Good. Anybody else? Um, I grew up Baptist. And um, going to, to a Baptist church, is, you didn't really know about God. You could do whatever you wanted and then come back to church and you saved. <laughs> but then I learned that was wrong. Um, I went to a holiness church and we had to wear long dresses. If you didn't, you couldn't wear pants, you couldn't wear jewelry. Um, and if you did that, you weren't holy, you weren't saved. If you didn't do that, and I was under that for a couple of years. And then I moved here to Florida and was seeking for the real kingdom of God, not me being more holy than anybody else. But I did learn that there is a kingdom, but I wasn't a part of it yet until I came here. That's an interesting way to put it. Yeah. yeah. I, I bet that's true for all of us. First, mm -hmm. it's a topic. It's something we learn. Then we learn, no, uh -huh. I'm part of it. I, that's good. I like yeah. that. Thank you. Yeah. Well, Sandra, you got from Freedom Kid. You all blinged up all the time, girl. <laughs> 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 you got She's Freedom Kid. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. When I did get free, I'm like, that's not, God is not looking for what you wear. Yeah. He's right. looking at your heart. Um, he's looking at what we should be doing for him is winning souls, not, oh, because I, I got on these clothes. I can look like a man that's homeless, but as long as I have love in my heart for anyone and teaching them about God, then I'm, I'm, I'm right. But these things, these are things. They can go anytime. So I'm just grateful that I did learn about mm -hmm. the kingdom of God, and now I'm a part of it. Mm -hmm. I'm a part of it. I knew it was missing in my life, but now it's not. Amen. Yeah, I look at this church. I don't. I, I well, I look at it. I don't look at it as a church. No. I look at this as a training center. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Anybody that comes in here just for the sermon or just for the worship is, I think they got it wrong. Mm -hmm. I, I think they're missing the whole thing of what what Pastor Charlie is all about. Mm -hmm. yeah. Pastor Charlie is not about the sermon. It's not about the worship. It's, it's good. Training. And it's honoring, and and, and it's a, it's a gathering. But I think that if you leave here and come here with the love, mm -hmm. with the understanding that you're going to get something about the kingdom no matter what, mm -hmm. and then leave here with that same thing, you're going to be a better person. But you have to come with the understanding and seek first the kingdom of God. Exactly. Mm -hmm. if that's what we're here for. So that's, that's why I, I'm here. I'm here just like it, uh, most of you is... We've been, Karen and I have been in, in ministry for years and together, and we've been in huge churches. Mm -hmm. I haven't called kingdom of God. What's this kingdom stuff? Mm -hmm. And when, when Pastor Charlie starts talking about kingdom, I was going, my God, what do we do for the last 28 years? Mm -hmm. How do we do yeah. this? And then how can you come here without getting that thirst for the kingdom mm -hmm. when it's all around you and it's mm -hmm. taught? <coughs> 
And I think part of it isn't just um, seeking the scriptures, which really for me come alive the more experiences I have in life. So the Lord kind of show, teaches me the word and the life experiences together. But when you have personal encounters with him and he shows you that he is the one who's pursuing you. And what he's saying to me when he shows me the Jewish people and their history and his promises to them is, I'm providing myself a people. And so when he woos us and brings us to him, he's providing himself with the right people that he wants to be in his family. And it's, it's kind of hard to explain, but it's, it's um, the more you have, um, the more you have experiences and understanding with him and his word, the more you realize that you are part of the kingdom and that he is the kingdom. <clears throat> well, thank you, everyone. Um, I think that concludes another day at Kingdom School. And uh, next week we got Chapter 3, which is Instructions for Your Kingdom Journey. So read up and come prepared to talk about that and talk through it. And um, thank you, everybody out there that's watching us online. And we look forward to seeing you next week. Be blessed. Thank you for tuning in to today's message from Identity Church. To know more about us, go to identitychurch.net, where you'll find resources such as a calendar, media, and upcoming events. You may also download an app for your mobile device from the Apple App Store or Google Play. Then from your mobile device, you can hear our messages, read from the Bible, take notes, connect with us on the social media, and even pay your tithe. Again, thank you for tuning in to today's message from Identity Church.